Hi, I'm Gareth Green and in this video we're going to be thinking about the topic of tension and release in music. Now this is something you might want to be more aware of as a performer. It's certainly something you want to be thinking about if you're a composer. Because you know music can easily sound rather tedious if it all sits on one level. You know if I play a piece of music that maybe goes like this you'll see what I mean. I don't know about you I'm starting to go to sleep. I mean it's okay isn't it? It doesn't sound wrong or harmful in any sort of way but do you see what's happening? It's all sitting at one level. And if we want music to be interesting, as we do, then we need to feel moments when tension is building and moments when that tension is being released. So if we're writing a piece of music, how do we generate tension and release? If we're playing a piece of music, how do we recognize tension and release just by looking at a score or playing something What's happening musically that could be generating tension and release? Well, there are a lot of possibilities, but I'm going to focus on five. So you've got kind of five tips to work with. And the first one is this. It's really about the level of rhythmic activity. Okay, so let's see what we might mean by this. So in other words, if I had a piece of music that sort of started <clears throat> in similar way to the, the one I've just played, you've got a kind of rhythm that's fairly predictable. The same kinds of values of notes. Occasionally there's one that's twice as length of the other one, but... But what you can do if you want to build a bit of tension is increase the rhythmic activity. So if I carry on, but I start to, to see what's happening now, the rhythm is getting slightly more involved. starting to sound a bit more interesting just because the rhythm is getting busier isn't it and you can hear how that rhythmic build up of activity things just moving faster is building up a little bit of tension it may not be a massive amount of tension but it is building a little bit of musical tension if I'm then in a place where I'm quite busy rhythmically and I want to move on to release I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to slow down the rhythm. So if I've got my rhythm going, and then I start to slow down that rhythm, and then maybe get to a place where it's much slower. Can you hear how the release has come about just by slowing down the rhythmic activity? So that's one tip, you know, if you're writing a piece, often we don't think enough about rhythmic activity. You know, we get rhythms going and then we just keep the same rhythms going all the way through the piece. When you look at a piece of music, a Beethoven sonata or something, you won't find it doing that. You'll find the rhythmic activity building in certain places, slowing down in other places, and that's doing a lot to generate tension and release. Okay, well the second tip is sort of related really and it's about tempo. Because one thing you can do in terms of uh, tension and release is to change the tempo. So uh, you might do this quite dramatically, like you might have quite a slow section. And then you might think, actually, I could change gear quite dramatically just by going much faster. That's suddenly taken us from this quite relaxed place up a gear, isn't it? Just by changing the tempo. It may be that you could increase 
tension by having an accelerando. So we're gradually building tempo up to a particular point of tension and then we could slow down again to give us a little bit of release. So you could start at one speed. Gradually speed up. tempo increase is building a little bit of tension. Tension's all relative, by the way. You know, you could have tension that takes us from point zero right up to the top of a scale, or you might think there's a bit of tension, it starts here, but we just builds a little bit and then tails off again. So some of these peaks are quite kind of subtle, and some of them will be much bigger. That all bodes well in a piece of music. You don't want that to be the same pattern over and over again. So just by changing your tempo by a sudden tempo change or a gradual tempo change, be that an accelerando getting faster, a rallentando getting slower, or having rubato within a piece where we've got a little bit of something more subtle going on with flexibility that's helping to paint tension and release. So tempo is an obvious one to go for. Um, number three would be dynamics. Now, this isn't always the case, but quite often it works quite well when you want to build a bit of tension to get louder. Uh, sometimes when you want to release the tension, you might want to get quieter. This is quite an interesting thing to think about. For example, if you want to play Baroque music on the piano, well, if you find an authentic edition, you won't find much in the way of dynamics in the score. If it was a piece originally written for the harpsichord, well, dynamics often were not particularly possible. You could change keyboards, change the stops if you had a big enough harpsichord. If you just had a one stop, one keyboard harpsichord, you wouldn't be able to do anything. So you'll find preludes and fugues by Bach and things, parties and so on, where you've got nothing much to go on with dynamics. So when you're the performer, you've got to look at the music and you've got to think, if I'm going to play that on the piano, uh, or arrange it for other instruments, am I going to build in some dynamics that paint the tension and release that Bach or whoever has written into the piece? Because if you just play it at one dynamic level, actually on the piano or on other instruments, it may not convey the tension and release that actually somehow works on a different kind of instrument like the harpsichord. So dynamics, well, what do I mean by this? Well, I could have a piece of music that starts quite quietly. as I build the dynamics. You can hear that the tension is building a bit because of that dynamic build-up. Um, obviously the reverse is true, I can get quieter, release the tension. Obviously there's a lot I can do with dynamics. I can make those gradual changes I've just described or I can make sudden changes. So we go from a, a moment of release to a sudden point of tension. We might want to grow to that point or relax from that point, or we might want to go suddenly to that point or suddenly to this point. That's all part of the tension and release issue really. So dynamics can do a great deal there. And it's amazing actually, when you listen to a performance that hasn't got dynamics in it, you often think, actually, what a pity, because somebody's playing the right notes, they're perhaps going at the right speed, but it hasn't really got anything much to say in the way of tension and release, just because the dynamics are flat lining. So variety of dynamics can do a lot with tension and release. And when you're writing a piece, that's why it's important to make sure you indicate what you want. You know, you know where your tension and release is. Um, if dynamics are one of the ways in which you're conveying that in the piece you've written, Mark them in the score, make sure we know what's going on. Okay, well, what's the fourth area that you might want to think about? It's this, the use of texture. You know, so another, what do I mean by that? You know, how is the sound organized? Is the sound high or low or spaced out? Um, have I just got two parts or I've got lots of parts? Is it a thick texture with lots of notes in or a thin texture with just 
maybe two parts or something or even one line on its own well we can vary the texture can't we i might start with a texture for example that's in two parts and this texture might accumulate so i go from two parts to three parts to four parts maybe to more parts and you can hear how this can play a part in building some musical tension so i'll start in two parts a third part and you can hear that's already a bit more involved and now there's four parts and I've built the texture a bit more and then I'll build it again and now I've got more parts going it kind of builds up you see how that's going I'm thickening the texture I'm building the number of parts it may combine with some of these other things we've already talked about but there's a lot you can do with how thick the texture is uh, how spaced it is whether it's a homophonic chordal texture or it becomes more polyphonic these are all ways of building and releasing tension again so there's texture and the fifth area <clears throat> and remember this is not exhaustive there are many other things that you might want to do um, but it involves this harmony so if you want to build your tension in terms of harmony you might go from fairly straightforward diatonic chords to more chromatic chords or you might want to modulate for example so you know i i might start off in one key here's a major fairly straightforward diatonic chords you can feel this is all on a fairly similar level can't you really but the minute I do this that chord suddenly I've introduced a note that modulates to a different key and I'm going to start getting a bit more adventurous with extended chords like sevens and that just uh, ranks up that a little bit here's another modulation this time I'm on from E major to C sharp so that business of switching between major and minor I've gone back to E major again but here's a D natural that's taken me to A major and then I might do something that's a bit more chromatic that's increasing the tension there's a diminished sound and then there's a moment of release in the tension and then I might have a more dramatic I'm using the harmony and the modulation to generate some tension and then maybe generate some release as well as I say many other ways in which you can do it but certainly when you're wanting to write a piece that's going to be successful in its communication this is an area that many people perhaps don't think enough about and when you're playing something try to get yourself in the mind of the composer just look at the piece have a think about it think well what's happening when does the rhythm get busier when does it actually calm down a bit what's happening with the tempo when the dynamics build up is that telling me something about an increase in tension or when they come down is that telling me about release or are there sudden changes to be made you know uh, what's happening with the texture when is the texture thicker when is it thinner when is it more involved when is it less involved what's happening with modulation and chords and so on so that we become much more effective as performers in conveying the tension and release and as composers in building it in to make a score sound really interesting.